Okay, so we got a little treat today. Uh, we got a new machine day at Bar Z. And I'm going to show you this is the original paperwork that came with my machine. I don't know whether you can see it there. They wrote it, wrote it in pencil. 8919, serial number 8919, 14 by 54. That's my machine. So this is the original documentation uh, that came with uh, with my machine. I did buy a Monarch. And this is some very retro. Look at that building. How cool is that? It's very retro paperwork. All the specs on my machine there. It's a 14 AA is what I got. And I've got this fold out. I was going to go through this with you because it's just the coolest uh, paperwork there is. So it's an old black and white of what my machine looked like. Uh, factory new. And this is all original. There's some accessories you can order. I don't have some of these things. I don't have the follow rest. I don't have the Jacobs chuck. That's a pretty hefty looking uh, steady. I've got just a standard steady rest. I've got these tool blocks, but I'm not a fan. I do not have the anti-friction taper turning attachment. I don't have that. That'd be wonderful to find. Double tool post for your carriage or for your cross slide. So anyways, that's uh, some of the original paperwork. There's a cool old building. The Monarch plant in Sydney, Ohio. The most modern and best equipped. Got rigging instructions here for models M, N, and double N. Rigging instructions for A, W, and BB. And there's everyone's favorite, the double E. It's got rigging instructions for all of those. Handling, cleaning, installation, leveling tools. Leveling. Oiling, lubrication, care and maintenance, care and operation. This is, uh, the, all these old pages have just a wonderful patina to them. They're just uh, a little dog-eared, a little yellow, still pretty sturdy, you know. Turning troubles, diagnose. Example of a machinery tag. And then there's parts breakdowns. There's the uh, drive clutch assembly. There's the headstock. All Timken bearings in the headstock. All helical gears. All hardened. There's all the levers for the headstock. I don't want to break the back of this book. No one's ever broken the back of it. So I'm not folding these down hard. Uh, in gear train. There's your change gearbox. Those are straight cut gears, but they're still on Timkins, which is pretty cool. No plain bearings in this one. No bronze bushings, no plain bearings. Uh, come on, let's get to the next page. All right. This is uh, some uh, bed parts, lead screws, clutch. And here's, here's everything in the apron. Again, with the Timkins in the apron. It's got a Bijour oiler. It's got a little cam-operated oiler inside of the uh, carriage. Pretty cool. Hopefully those parts still work on mine. All that has to be checked and tested. There's the actual carriage and compound. Tailstock. So that's nice to have. That's pretty cool. So let's let's figure out the vintage of this machine. I also have this, which I think this is probably a reprint. But what I do have is the original customer. Yes, that says Colt Patent Firearms Manufacturing, Hartford, Connecticut. Date is ten. 2240, almost exactly one year before Pearl Harbor. So there's all the original options that were on it. There's more of the original options that were on it. 
And a lot of this was just uh, some reprints of what I already have. Lubrication, this looks like a little more modern. This is a page out of that book. This looks like to be a reprint. This is what I already have. This looks to be a reprint, but I have the original, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go take a look at the machine. Let's go take a look at serial number 8917. Here's some of the tooling I hauled out of there. Well, this stuff's pretty heavy. There's uh, the tailstock. There's a steady rest under there. Some face plates. Uh, there's a few. Uh, there's a couple chucks in there. Uh, some tooling. Some dogs. Tool holders. Motor starter. Oh, this is interesting. You're gonna. Well, I'm gonna save this for later. That's kind of a surprise. That's the motor starter, but it's not what you expect. Let's go straight to the tag. Here's your model or manufacturer's number 8917, 14 inch double A. That's how they classified it. The actual swing is 16.5. So I believe this is 14 inches over carriage and 16.5 over bed. I think that's how they rated them. And we're uh, 54 inches between centers. This thing's kind of a beast. Uh, the riggers just left. They dropped it on my big uh, pallet dollies. I've had 10,000 pounds on those two dollies right there. So I can still move this thing around. Each one of those pallets has a steel frame and six uh, Albion uh, caster wheels under it. So, uh, you know, we have to be able to get this thing out of the weather when we need it. That's why it's on wheels. Two people can actually roll this around pretty easily. So it's not bad. I've already uh, uh, had to move it once. I am going to pack it. I've started, uh, I sprayed this down with Cosmoline about an hour ago, so it's almost dry here. So it's going to have kind of a waxy finish. I've locked the carriage. I don't want the Cosmoline getting under the carriage. I oiled under there first and kind of parked it right where it sits. And uh, But I want you to notice the ways, how clean the ways are. I know you can't see much with the Cosmoline on it. This is right up by the, uh, this is the working end of it. The ways are on this thing are super clean. And there's the pressure fed oiler uh, here for the carriage. There's a pump type bijou in there. So this is the oil sump. And the oiler sits down in, in that cavity there. It's got a travel dial on it. I'm going to cover that up. That's missing the crystal, but it works. So that, I, if I got to find someone to put a crystal on that, I'll, maybe I'll find a, a watchmaker or something. But 54 inch bed, uh, pretty good size, you know. Uh, nothing but oil down in the sump. And as oily as this machine is, I'm going to say they used oil exclusively and never used any water-based uh, material in it. There's a the old Monarch flame-hardened uh, tag behind there. Uh, this machine was under power when I went to go look at it. So I was able to run it through all the gears. I don't have any video of that. But it's uh, start-stop here. It engages a motor starter. Pick your uh, rotation, forward or reverse on the motor down here, and then engage the clutch. And you're gonna, and then it, that'll send it through your headstock gears and get your get your spindle turning. And then from there, you can do uh, your quick change box out to your different feed rates and threads. But like I say, it was under power. I was able to run it in all speeds and all feed rates. Um, up in the head, helically cut gears, hardened and pressure fed oiled. God, this thing runs silent. It does. It's not very fast. You know, I would think a machine like this would could run faster than a, than a thousand. But that's what it's rated for and that's max. And uh, going through the spec sheets, it was interesting. They offered it in, in 800 max speed and 1,000. So this is the highest rpm for the for the weight of this machine you would think it would be able to swing something bigger uh, i mean just look at the size of that carriage it's massive but uh, i'm very pleased um it's a pretty interesting story i i picked it up in city of inglewood from a gentleman that rebuilt uh packards and he was old enough he used to <laughs> When Packard was still around, he was a service technician and he did stuff for Packard. So 
uh, as soon as they went obsolete or whatever, he started doing restorations and stayed with it. And now he's got a bunch of high-end customers, Hollywood elites and stuff like that, that he did Packard's for. So he is, was a second owner. He bought this from Colt in 1963, same year I was born. And it's been in Inglewood ever since 1963. And he was retiring. He was, he was an old fella, nice enough guy. He was a great guy. And some of the cars in there were just absolutely beautiful. But he, uh, um, you know, it was interesting to talk to him and learn some of the history on this machine. I, he had this machine and he had a, a Monarch 10 E. Uh, I was two days late for the 10 E. Otherwise, I'd be owning that. I would have owned that too. But I was two days late for that, and uh, he said he only used the big lathe. That he, that's, this is what he referred to as the big lathe. He only used the big lathe for flywheels on the Packards since 63. So this since 1963, it has seen very little use. Colt firearms, probably not so much. It was probably worked pretty hard at Colt. Now that you know who the original customer was, I'm going to show you this. This is pretty darn interesting. Have you ever seen a motor starter manufactured by Colt? That's Colt's logo. You come down here to the tag. Colt Patent Firearms Manufactured Manufacturing Company made in USA. That's the magnetic motor starter for that lathe. So no way is that, that thing still works. There's no way that is not going back on that lathe. It just went on the wall right behind the lathe. So that's going back on. Uh, and I'm really looking for, I mean, it's a little buzzy, a little hummy and we'll do, we'll shoot some more video when we get all that, you know, back in, uh, back up and running and the lathe in place. The lathe is not in place right now. I have just ordered my shop extension, which brings my shop out to the edge of this slab. There's a footing already in there, uh, but I'm still two months out on my materials. So this thing in the meantime gets, uh, rolled in and out, which is zero fun because it's a pig, but uh, I just thought I'd share new machine day at Bar Z. Uh, I've got my little piece of Americana. It's, uh, I am, I can't tell you how pleased I am to get this machine in this condition with the way it sat, the way it ran. It was just beautiful in every way. It needs very little work. It needs a little bit of cleanup, but I even like the patina. You know, from five feet away, I think just looks black. When you get closer, it's an, it's, probably a dark gray with an oil film but the patina on it is just beautiful i'm not going to change a thing all right guys thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed uh seeing the seeing this machine come around uh stay tuned to the channel as we extend this shop and make room for the uh the new monarch